Hi there, welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at sanding and profiling and getting a balsa structure to the point where we can start to think about covering it. Now I'm going to be working on this flying wing but the things I'm going to be talking about can be related to any kind of balsa structure really whether we're working on a fuselage or on a wing it doesn't necessarily relate to just the flying wing and this is a question I get frequently asked about sanding and profiling about how it should be done what grade sandpaper things like that so I thought it'd be really useful to do this video now this wing has got some big chunks of balsa that still need to come off it before it can be considered a lovely sleek flying machine. So you can see the wing tips, we've got some great big chunks of balsa on there that need bringing down. If we look at the wing tips we can see they're a little bit too long so we need to trim the wing tips and get them nicely in line with those ailerons or elevons, whatever the control surface is, it might be the tail plane on a fixed wing plane. When we're doing that, we need to be mindful of having the right gap, the right hinging gap, because we don't want to get these nicely in line and then find out when we glue the hinges in, we got it slightly wrong and the elevons are sticking out. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at let's call it a plan view so we're going to be looking down on top of the wing or up from the underside of the wing and we're going to make sure that we've got the profile exactly right so I'm going to be sanding these wing tips to get them in line with the elevons I'm going to be rounding off and getting this nice and then these wing tips I'm going to be bringing them all nicely in line with this front edge because you can see they're sticking up a little bit at the moment so essentially when we look at it from this angle it's going to be right once we've done that we're going to look at it from an end view and make sure that it looks right so we're going to be sanding the uh, the, the bulk of the uh, the wingtip here this lump that actually sticks up high and we've got some of these webs here that are sticking up high. So essentially when we've got that done, we could look at it from the end like this and think that actually it looks really nice. So we'll get the plan done, we'll get the side done, so anything that sticks up. And when we do that, we'll include touching up these, um, uh, the wings, the uh, cap strips, anything that might just have a little bit of a, a point that sticks up proud. And only when we've got that done, we'll think about the careful profiling of the leading edge and these uh, wing tips. Because where we've got those big chunks of balsa, even though we've got it correct that way and we've got it correct that way, we're still going to need to profile these down. We're going to need to put a ball nose or a rounded front on the, uh, on the leading edge. So I'm going to get on and do that and I'll just very quickly talk about how I'm going to do it. Now I use these homemade sanding sticks and I've got different grades of sandpaper, garnet paper on here and I make these myself. The sandpaper just peels off really quickly and you can stick new stuff on and if you want to know how I make these have a look in the description below and there'll be a, a, a link just showing you. I've also got some uh, round ones which I don't think we'll be using in this uh, video, but they're really, really useful. So what grade do we use? I, I know there's, I, I read lots of things about the grades you should use. Now I use an 80 grit to start with. Now an 80 grit is pretty coarse, but the 80 grit I'm using is generally kind of fairly old, so it's not really as harsh as fresh 80 grit. But I use that for the, uh, the, the bulk, the major sanding that we're going to do. But when you're using an 80 grit, it's really important. And to be honest, if you can with any other sandpaper, we need to be working in the direction of the grain. If you use an 80 grit going across the grain like that, you're going to introduce lines and score marks in the balsa, which will come out with the finer paper. 
but it's a bit more work. So if we're going to use an 80 grit to do the coarse profiling like I'm going to do in a minute, we need to be trying to go with the grain. And I find 80 grit will get away some of the, the crystallisation that you get from CA where you've just done some of the gluing. So I'm going to get on and do this now and we'll come back once we've done those two profiles and they're nicely sanded. Actually it's worth just saying that when I get to this stage and I'm cleaning this up and getting it ready to cover I always work on a nice soft towel. The last thing we want to do is be sanding it, getting, the, getting it lovely and smooth and then scratching it on a bit of glue that's on the bench or a little bit of wood or something like that. So a nice soft surface is great. And if we are sanding indoors, then the towel like this can just stop it sliding around a little bit. But to be honest, most of this I'm going to be taking outside <laughs> because I don't want to be breathing the dust. But I will do little bits in the workshop, just little tweaks here and there. So anyway, I'm going to get this outside and start to get it sanded. Right, well, it's cold outside, but I've got some of this sanded now and it's looking a lot better. Now, if we look at it from this angle, we can see now that that is lovely and in profile. These are the correct length for the, uh, for the elevons. And again, round here, it's all nice. We've got nothing sticking out beyond what we should have. Now, if we look at this end, end on like this, again, it's looking really nice. We haven't got anything sticking above the profile that we should have. Even these wingtips are being rounded off really nice. Now, if we look at this end, uh, I've done the top surface, but not the bottom. And I thought I'd just quickly show you uh, a couple of things about doing the, uh, the profile like I've been doing it. So when we're doing this uh, profiling, looking from the end, so anything that kind of sticks up above, what we need to do is use something like a long sanding stick like this. And we can use the, uh, the, the wing, the, the leading edge here, as a guide to allow us to get that just right. So as we sand, this is just lightly touching this as we go. And we'll just keep doing that, making sure we're sanding this but not this area. And we'll just keep going round until eventually this is all nice and really uh, flush against the whole leading edge here, including the tip. But we're just at this stage sanding the tip, not the, uh, not the leading edge. If we're concerned about damaging this leading edge, there is something we can do, and I'll show you in relation to these cap strips. So again, if we look at the end here, I don't know where that shows up, but we've got some bits that are sticking up here that are ruining that profile along with this front bit. And so we need to sand these. And again, we can use the, the wing as a guide to allow us to sand just the bits here that we want. Now, we need to be really careful we don't damage these and particularly if they haven't got cap strips and they're just open ribs then it'd be really easy to wear these down. So what I do in situations like that is just put a piece of tape, masking tape, on the structure that we don't want to, uh, don't want to sand but that we want to use as a guide. I'm just doing this really roughly and uh, if I was uh, doing it properly I would take more time but so now we can sand this end the bits that stick up like here and we know that we're not damaging these structures here because there's nothing worse than working away like this on an area and then looking back and realizing you've just sanded a bit out of your rib which you didn't want to do so we can just keep working on that bit that's sticking up until it comes down. Now, if we're worried about the leading edge, which I don't really think we should be because it's such a big area, what we can do is we can always put a piece of tape on that as well. I, I don't really think it's, it, it's that necessary, but we can do just so we don't um, damage it. But it's surprising how quickly this will come down now 
and, uh, and fitting with that end profile of the wing. I mean, if we look at it there now, it's, it's almost there, a little bit more off. So I will get this end profile, looking from this end, all finished, like I've done on, uh, on this end. And then we'll start looking at the next stage of the sanding. And at the moment, I'm still using this fairly worn 80 grit. And if you see, I don't know whether, how well that shows up, but you can't see any major scratches in there. Nothing that won't come out when we start doing a finishing with something like a 220 or a, a 340 grit. Okay, well I've got that uh, bit on the wingtip finished now. So as I said, we've got the, the, the plan, sort of looking down, outline, perfect. That could be a finished wing now. We've also got the view looking from the end that should be looking like a perfect wing now and finished. And if we do this, we've also got that end looking exactly the same. So there's nothing sticking up that shouldn't be there. It all looks nice and smooth and as it should be. But the next thing we need to do is look at it from the front or from the back, I guess. But I, I would suggest the front. And if we look at the wing tips, and if I can hold that at the right angle, we can see that there's, there's bits sticking up here that shouldn't be there. We've also got bits here that shouldn't be there. And so what we need to do now is get this front view, looking from the front, uh, nice and in profile, so it's right. And I would suggest we work from the back. So from these uh, fillets, uh, triangular pieces, whatever, uh, we'll work on those and get those so that they come down at a nice angle from this cap strip. So we just work them down one by one. And again, if we want to, if we're worried about damaging this uh, cap strip, because as we're sanding that, it is very easy to sand a bit of a bevel on there. We can just put a little bit of that masking tape along here so we don't sand it. So I'm gonna get those done now. And then I will leave that tip there until right at the very end. And I will sand that down, profile it down to the, the edge of this tip, but making sure that it fits in with these um, fillets. Because at the end of the day, we need to be very mindful of how the covering material is gonna go on when we start to shrink it, how it's going to uh, pull in what direction and and how you know just just how it's going to go on really and what shape this should be I find this systematic approach of looking at that view that view and then that view and getting those bits that look like they don't belong out the way really really good just a systematic methodical way of doing it it's then after we've done this next stage that we not need to start thinking about doing the uh, profiling, the leading edge, putting a nice curved bull nose uh, on the front of that. And at the moment, I'm still using this worn 80 grit, but we will get to finer when we start to come to the point where we're gonna finish it off. So I'm gonna get these wing tips done now. I thought it'd be worth just showing how you can use tape to protect, protect these edges here that we don't want to inadvertently sand down and damage. Now you can see this fillet here from the wing tip to the, uh, the top of the wing has got some quite big pieces that need to come off. It's way off uh, what it should be. So we need to sand this down and by putting that tape on we are comfortable that we're protecting those edges. So now we can just sand that, and unless we, unless we go really mad, we shouldn't uh, go through the tape. Now I'm just having to put this at a little bit of an angle so I can see what I'm doing as well as record, but there we go. So now we have got a, a good straight line there I think, maybe a tad more off, but we, more importantly, we haven't damaged or worn down any of these structures. And I can guarantee you that it, I, I would have done if I hadn't put the tape on. So now that is a nice smooth line coming along there. So I need to do that one, make sure these are right, and then we'll have a look at this, uh, this leading edge bit here. 
Right, I'm now working on the very front leading edge of these wing tips and you can see I've already been sanding the top piece as compared to the bottom piece and it's really important that we don't have this too big and bulbous or the covering is just going to come along and then drop down to this level. We need to try and think of the smooth transition of the film as it comes up and around this corner and to help us with that we can take our a sanding stick like this and then just gently take it up the tip hit that front bit and then get it around like that so it's we can feel that transition as we go and, uh, and we get that profiled nicely and I think that now is uh, is more or less looking about right we can see that it's following through this line from the back of the, uh, let's move that over a little bit, from the back of, the, uh, of the, uh, the tip, like this, we follow through and, uh, and that will provide a good, smooth transition, I think, for the fill. It's a little bit roughed up at the moment, but when I get some fine sandpaper on that, or garnet paper, it will be a lot better. So now I'm going to do the bottom one and the tip at the other end. Well, I'm really pleased with how this is looking now. I've got those front tips done and so just to recap we've done that kind of plan view we've got nothing out of place if we look at it from the end it looks like it's finished it's perfect there's nothing out of place and now if we look at from the front at those wing tips we can see how they're really nicely profiled as well and once we get that covering film on it's really going to look sweet it's, um, I mean, all the gross finishing is more or less done. There's just one final task uh, before we leave the 80 grit behind and move on to something a little bit smoother. And the final job is to do this leading edge. That's one thing we haven't done as yet. Now, I don't know how well this will show up on the camera, but at the moment, the leading edge is really pointed because it's just the two pieces of sheeting that come down to create a point and we really don't want that we want a nice rounded uh, rounded profile on the front uh, a bull nose and uh, or at least <laughs> that's what we call it in the UK I recently found out uh, talking to Richard one of the the people who subscribes to my channel real interesting guy and he said what's a bull nose so we came to the understanding that across the pond in the US people don't necessarily use the, the term bull nose for the, the shape of the front. But anyway, <laughs> that aside, and thanks for the education Richard, it was really good. And uh, what I'm going to do now is put a nice smooth round profile on the nose, a bull nose. So I'm going to use a plane and I think I will put my glasses on because that will help me get it right and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this nice and square on the wing and take off that point. Now I can only do this so much because I can't get in closer than about there because of the engine mount but I can do that with a, a sailing stick and can we get in any more if we do that? No we can't. So I'm just going to take that off now, so we have probably take about a sixteenth, an eighth an inch, so we've got a nice flat front on that. And all the time it's worth looking at it and being mindful that what this is going to look like once we take off those edges now between the flat and the curved front and, and the shape that we want. But to take off a flat first is much better than just diving in and trying to sand it off with uh, with a sanding stick. So, see, I'm getting some quite quite wide strips off there now, and um, that is probably getting one one more. And there we go. And now we can see that we have gone from a point hopefully that shows up I know it's difficult to see because the balsa is so light so we've gone to a little bit of a flat top now 
So what I'm going to do now is just go along that and take off the sharp edge between the flat top and the sheeting and that should result in a lovely ball nose. I think I'll take this outside and do this but you get the idea hopefully. I'll sand, uh, sorry, plane this end as well and then I can do it both at once. Right, I've now got that ball nose or, or uh, leading edge profile lovely and, and rounded and smooth, just how we need it for, uh, for a wing. So the next stage, I mean this is, this is done now as far as the gross sanding. There's no high spots anywhere, there's no real bits that need to be taken down so that they're in the right profile. It's just a case of finishing and I'm just going to be using this 220 grit sand paper or garnet paper actually on that side of my stick and it's just a case of going over it and making sure that it really is lovely and smooth. There's the odd bit of sheeting here where I got in and, and, and had to go across the grain and there's a few little scratches there but I'm just going to get those out now using something really fine and then we'll have our lovely smooth profile re wing ready to cover. Well I am really pleased now with this. I've, I've gone all over it with the, the really fine 220 garnet paper and it feels absolutely lovely. I need to just wipe off or vac off the dust because it is a little bit dusty but there's no blemishes or high spots or anything. I'm, I'm really pleased with how this has gone. And it's worth saying at this stage that it really is worth spending the extra time and effort to get it right, to make sure there's nothing sticking proud or sort of joints that aren't quite right. Because as soon as you start to get the covering on this, any imperfections are gonna show up really well which is never good when you start covering it oh gosh I wish I'd sanded that a bit more so it really is worth spending the extra little bit of effort to to get it right and I've said this right at the beginning but I'll say it again any of the techniques that I've used in this video are equally applicable to any kind of balsa model really whether it's a flying wing a fixed wing a jet whatever I mean, the, the, the technique I used, if you've seen the uh, video I did, shaping the Avanti fuselage, that was exactly the same principle as this, looking at it from one angle, then from another, then from another, and then just rounding off the edges. I, in fact, I'll, I'll include a link uh, to that video in the description below this, but the principle is the same, whether it's a fuselage or a wing. So anyway, I hope you found this useful, hope you found it interesting, and thanks very much for watching.